Welcome to the Vokta Cafe by Après Cool. This is a place where we chat live about teaching a trade in today's world. And my name is Robin. I'm one of your, your hosts here. And we have Mark that's also with us. You want Hello. To say hi, Mark. Okay. And Richard as well, who's one of our co-producers. We're going to use like, big fancy words. We're producing stuff. <laughs> Uh, and so before we get started on our on our talk today, I just want to do a little reminder that on the website of uh, Les Après Cours Vocational Training, you have access to all the documents. So you don't have to worry too much about taking notes today uh, if you want to concentrate and participate in the conversation. All the recordings and summaries and the archives are found on the page and they have the little articles there that, that you can link to. There's also the collaborative document. So the place where we're going to take notes today is, is you have a link to that. There's the calendar so you can see the upcoming Voc Talk cafes. And if you click on the little plus sign next to the Google Calendar, you can integrate that and sync it to your work calendar. So you'll always have the link straight into your work calendar. And then any resources that we talk about are also shared in the resource library. So a quick word about the Voc Talk Cafe. It's a pilot project. So your implication and suggestions are really important. And we want to create this a space for you. So so definitely what you have to say, your thoughts or your ideas are 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 welcome and we'd love to hear them. Today, November 20th, 2003, we're continuing our, our, our little exploration into labor issues since we're all dealing with labor issues right now and strikes. And this week, we're going to be talking about integrating workplace issues in our, our classes in vocational training in the healthcare sector. So today's goals we would like to situate a sort of a critical perspective of worker rights and expectations for once our students get out into the workforce. We'd like to identify some possible government websites for support or areas where students can go for more information once they leave the, the, the vocational training uh, uh, world. And we want to discuss labor relations that specifically with like non-local students or 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 um, um, foreign born workers and and teaching them about the Canadian workforce because as we see this is going to be especially in the healthcare sector a big chunk of our students right on leprechaun or as I have now learned ça marche Pontiac on you vote okay so let's talk about integrating workforce issues so the Canadian labor situation so there's a great website by the Canadian History Museum it's circa 1999 so so we have to be patient with it but it has a lot of really good information and understanding the labor situation kind of like an overview is is there's work there's worker rights and then there's workforce expectations so me as a worker I have rights and then there's also what the workforce is expecting me to do and expect how the workforce is expecting me to expecting me to engage in my in my job. And if we look at a historical perspective for the public sector, because since we're talking about healthcare, we're talking about the public sector, this sector didn't start to unionize until the 1960s. There was sort of a wave in the 60s where um, the education sector, the public health sector, the postal workers, these government workers all started unionizing. And uh, then we came in the 70s where we had sort of this this another form of common front it wasn't common front as it's called today but this idea of like multiple unions coming together as, and and having a workforce go on strike in the 70s and then if there were there was also a series of strikes in the 1980s and 90s um, going after some of the issues with reorganization and restructuring of of jobs in the healthcare so, which brings us to the to the current situation so this, if on the one of the recent articles on the CBC website, kind of went over sort of the history of labor relations in the healthcare sector. And if we look at when it started, like some of the issues that they were talking about were, you know, workers wanted job security and they wanted to have pay scales and they wanted to have pensions and 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 vacation. And this was all stuff that that was very uneven in the sectors uh, in the 1960s. And then the strikes in the 70s 
were about wage increases and pension plans. And then the strikes in the 80s and 90s were about job restructuring and then wa protesting wage cuts. And then we move over to the strikes that we're in now and we're looking at um, uh, our, our workloads. Uh, at, we're looking at, there's a lot of discussion about index salaries. So it's not just about pay scales and it's not just about wage increases, but it's about wage increases that, that makes sense. Um, and then retirement packages, because we know in the healthcare sector, there's a lot of people being forced to continue working past the retirement cutoff. Um, another interesting thing was that, especially when dealing with the healthcare sector, because a large chunk of the healthcare sector are female workers, is we're looking at the the unions that are help that are governing this, and there's more union involvement, like from a managerial point of view, from women, uh, uh, from the '60s up until up until until the the early '90s. So this 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 data here doesn't go past the early '90s, but. But you can see that that more women are starting to take on a managerial role, and that possibly could show a reflection of the public sector workers unionizing because a lot of them are women coming from the education sector or or the healthcare sector. What's also interesting to note is that a large chunk of our workforce is foreign born. So when we look at the data from the OECD Organization of Economic Development, when we look at Canada's population, 22% of our workforce is foreign born. But in a study put out by the Ontario College of Nurses, 40% of the nursing workforce in Ontario, I don't have the statistics for Quebec, but Ontario is foreign born. We look at Montreal's just general population, and we have 35% of our population is born outside of the province. And then we look at the people's job skills that they have, and 16% of our workforce is overqualified for the position that they occupy. So this is all data that points to, well, we have a very distinct population that was not necessarily born and raised in this country and might not understand the role of labor organization in our workforce and workforce expectations around this. So with that, like when we're teaching our students, you know, we often teach them about say in this workers' rights and 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 you know safe working spaces. And in healthcare, we do have professional orders um, that we hopefully teach our students about. And then we also have our local and provincial unions. So when we're teaching, some of the questions I have would be, well, how do we introduce this concept of union syndicalization, the the historic role it plays, why it's there, the, the role of the order, not just as a, as a, as a governing uh, a board for the trade, but also to make sure that a trade standard is uphold, held. And is there a link or is there talks, uh, is there conversation circulating between the professional order seeing this as tea and the, the unions? Um, so this is, you know, these are some of the questions that sort of come up. And so in this topic, sort of the key takeaways is to say, okay, both foreign born and local students, we need to educate them about rights and expectations of the workforce and situate it so we can see why at this point we're, we're, we are talking about labor relations and why we have half a million people going on strike this, the, the week of, of November 11th to to 23rd, um, and that some of our foreign-born workers, because they're not familiar with the Canadian workforce and the expectations of the workforce, they might benefit from understanding a little bit of the historical context of labor, where this is coming from and why, and, and some of these systems that are in place. Why do we talk about um, local unions and why do we talk about provincial unions? Like, and this, So they might benefit a little bit from this. So with that, that's the end of the presentation. So Mark, would you like to uh, do your tech capsule? So the tech capsule that I prepared for this week uh, concerns the virtual spaces for students to utilize and discuss resources. I'm always looking for uh, technological, pedagog pedagogical resource uh, tools that teachers can use in relation 
with the topic that we're uh, discussing. And um, I was last week, I was talking about uh, virtual reality. And this week, I thought I was going to go more towards the metaverse or uh, uh, virtual, virtual spaces, because I think that putting students in a different situation can help them go towards uh, discussions, teamwork, uh, treasure hunts, or games, or uh, situations like that. So um, I'm presenting you two tools. There are many others, but those those are two that I've used uh, recently. One is called uh, Frame VR. The other one is Gather Town, and it's um, there. There are virtual spaces that you can create where students can interact with uh, resources talk about the uh, video interview of about uh, labor with with labor issue actors uh, whether uh, government or uh, union negotiators for example uh, infographics about diversity and inclusion curated health and safety videos documents published by your center audio recordings the number of resources that you can put there are uh, infinite uh, and then you create learning activities to do with that the students can do link to those resources that they have uh, they have used. And of course, I would encourage uh, very much to go towards uh, treasure hunts, games or discussions or teamwork, because you can create those little spaces where teams of students can uh, talk. The link here leads to a room that has been created by uh, the Récit Formation Professionnelle people. As you can see, I've already logged in, so I'm just going to connect and show you a little bit of what the space can be like. It's giving you an idea of the kind of space that can be created, and in each room, students can have conversations and discussions about what they're talking about, the topics that they've that you have uh, presented. So I don't want to take too much time here. I'm going to stop my presentation. That gives you an idea of the kind of virtual activities that could be uh, created linked to those uh, uh, work-related issues. The links are going to be in the presentation and in the in the library. Okay, cool. All right. Thanks very much, Mark. Okay, let me go back to sharing my screen. So before we wrap up, open mic. Any questions that we have? I did have a question come up. I can add one. It's the person is in here, but I did have a question about um, the QACVE submissions coming up for the end of the month. Uh, so QACVE is uh, the conference in the spring for vocational educators. Um, it will be held in Tetford Mines this year. And we have two types of workshops. We have, well, we have workshops and we have poster sessions. And I did have a question about the poster session. And the question was, can it be a trade specific? And the answer is absolutely. You can, you can do a poster session that really has to do with the way you're teaching your trade. Because the idea behind this poster sessions is that it's, it's, a space for teachers to showcase what they're doing to transmit their trade. And so teachers that are teaching that trade will be happy to, to, to get inspiration um, directly from, from, the, from, the, from the direct sharing. And teachers, even teachers that don't share that trade would be interested because it, it, they might be able to extrapolate something and bring that into their own world. So that was a question I got. I just like, so I'm, I'm putting up the question and giving the answer at the same time because <laughs> the person isn't here. Is there anybody else with a question before we move on? All righty. So to continue the discussion, please go to vt.proceed.ca, log in and join your trade group, and you can start a discussion thread or continue a current discussion. And if you need a hand, there's a little chat feature that connects directly to my phone. And usually from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., I, I answer right away. Otherwise, it goes to an email. And for those of you that participated, please take a moment to fill out a form to let us know how you liked the session. Uh, if you have an idea for a Voc Talk Cafe, you can drop us a line. And 
Of course, there's our our, our email addresses, so you can reach both Mark and I at at, at uh, myself at Proceed or at Mark at at RC. And the resources to this presentation uh, are, are, are well, they will be in the resource library as well at the end of uh, at the end of this presentation. And thanks for coming. And the next Vok Talk Cafe is November 27th. Maybe depends on strikes. <laughs> So maybe we'll be living labor relations. Maybe we'll be talking about them. <laughs>